Hello everybody, welcome to Scribbles with Jonathan. I'm your host, Jonathan Rector. You guys can check out my website and my work at jonathanrector.com. If you're on Twitter, follow me there as well, at Art by Jar. Uh, I'm going to be doing a little bit of it, a, a little, you know, a little test run, uh, see how this feels. Uh, what I'm doing is I'm drawing a, initially it was a dwarf berserker or a dwarf warrior, I think I'll end up going with it. Uh, and what I wanted to do was record it uh, from start to finish. Uh, and I'm not going to go 100%, uh, you know, the best illustration work I could possibly do. Uh, I just want this as a fun experiment just to see how it'll go. But I wanted to record the entire process. Um, this is going to end uh, with a, a tighter line for the, the head. Uh, but uh, you'll see that as we get there. And in uh, uh, future videos, hopefully in at least another video or two, uh, this will be totally wrapped up. Uh, I, I'm hoping that this video can help uh, shed a little light on some people's questions that they've been asking. Uh, I've gotten a few videos asking, or uh, questions, asking about rendering and hair and stuff, and, and what better thing to draw hair than is a, is a big dwarf, a big burly dwarf. Uh, so the first thing I started off there with uh, was just doing a very, very quick gesture, uh, basically just having an idea of placement of where the character is going. Uh, normally I like to work with a thumbnail, but I wanted to just, you know, get right into the action. And I actually do run into some problems, and I'll try to bring them up as I, as I see them. Uh, and it's going to be interesting to see how I tackle it. Uh, I've, you know, I should have definitely, and I recommend working, uh, doing thumbnails. Uh, you know, it, it takes no time to do, and it's only uh, your fault and my fault in this case for not uh, actually doing that, and you'll see as we go. Uh, so I start with a quick gesture just for placement. And now what I'm doing is, as you can see, I'm doing a second leg in the background. So it looks like he's kind of coming towards us, uh, trying to give that illusion anyway. Uh, working on a foot there. Um, and once I had my gesture, I just quickly start throwing on another gesture over top of that, getting a little heavier with the, the pencil, uh, still trying to keep it light, uh, but working with the, the gesture and the motion and the energy that I'm feeling uh, from the first step and to just start blocking in chunks of, uh, you know, like anatomy. Not necessarily... Uh, or hardly <laughs> even accurate anatomy, you know. Uh, like right here, I think I'm just gesturing where an axe is going to go, and that's going to change because I haven't really done the hand correctly yet. And you'll see as we get there, I uh, put in a second axe there for the other hand. Um, and uh, I have a very rough gesture going right now. And what I'm going to do here is I just grab the kneadable eraser, and uh, I do this every now and then, uh, especially since working digital. Uh, you know, making a quick layer over top of changing everything to a blue line. Uh, I've been doing this a lot with my traditional work now, too. I work in more gestural stages and just keep building it up from there. Uh, so what I'm doing now is erasing it with a kneadable eraser, just enough so I can still see the information over there, but it's not getting muddy, and it, gets, it allows me to uh, redraw over top of it. And what I'm about to do is I'm just going to go over and do another gesture, but based on uh, basically, you know, the gesture work that I've already done. And uh, you'll see. So here I'm just blocking in the nose. Uh, you know, it's not a tight line at all. Uh, right now I'm working on the brow. Just working on the structure that I've already established in the previous gesture uh, to where the face would be. Uh, right now working on the placement of the mouth while I'm screaming. Uh, you know, and I know that this guy's going to be having a, a mustache and a beard. Uh, but I still think it's, it's good to have a, a boundary, you know, knowing where your things are going, where things should line up. Uh, it just works for me that way. You know, uh, so right now I'm just gesturing where that uh, mustache was going to go. And here, uh, I actually was going to give him some weird braids and stuff, but I figured uh, as we'll go, <laughs> I thought it'd be kind of cool to tackle that hair question that people were asking and showing you how I do it. And right now we're going to go through an earthquake as I try to adjust my camera to get a little bit closer because I, I think uh, at, right now what I wanted to show, especially when we get into the rendering and the shading, I wanted to get a little bit closer, a little more intimate if you will, <laughs> uh, just so you can see a little bit tighter of a line. So uh, just bear with me here. Is, uh, <laughs> uh, this looks ridiculous. I think that's as close as we get. I, I was kind of hoping it would get closer. I didn't do a test run before this. Um, just adjusting the focus there. And I think I end up moving the cable so you don't see that giant uh, shadow of it. Uh, okay, I guess not. I kept it there. Okay, so here I'm working on the chest. Uh, I've already established where the rib cage is. It's a big oval around them. Uh, and, and this is actually where the problem's coming in. If I had taken this to a thumbnail stage, I would have been able to very quickly see overlapping shapes um, and placement, especially the axes. And what's happening here is I'm gesturing in the hand based on the previous gesture that I've done. 
And the problem I'm coming up with is if his hand is there, uh, that axe would actually be coming straight at us, and it's not you're not going to get a very cool look at the axe. And that circle there represents the handle uh, that he'd be holding on. And you'll see I'll actually leave the hand in a second because I, I realize I've come up to, against a problem. Um, so I, I quickly go away from the problem <laughs> and start going back to what I'm feeling a little bit more comfortable doing. Uh, so there, that, that straight line that I just did was just uh, from his collarbone all the way down to around his groin area, you know, the splitting up the middle of the... Uh, the chest and the, the abdomen, really. Uh, working on a kneecap here that'll be up in the front. I guess he'd be crouching, kind of running at us. Uh, just working on big, bulky shapes here for him. Get a giant uh, calf, calf muscle there. And here I'm just going to quickly, uh, you know, indicate where his his thigh for his other leg that's going to be going into the background. Some foreshortening going on here. Uh, working in volume shapes and stuff like that. Uh, insinuate where the foot is, so at least people know what the hell's uh, going on there. At least, uh, you know, helping <laughs> let them know what's going on. Uh, here, I'm going to start working on the second shoulder. And actually, this is what I'm talking about where the problems are coming in. Uh, I, his hand initially was kind of crouched up. Uh, similar to the previous hand, um, and I and I what was happening was I was feeling too constricted within the page. I didn't work out where my boundaries were beforehand, so I'm flaring his arm off the page. And again, if you look, his hand's going to be very similar to the the previous hand that I did, and uh, you'll see right here. So what I'm doing is I'm working in a, a cylinder, which would be the handle of the axe going through the hand there, so I can understand where his grip's going, and I'm just gesturing really quickly where the axe is going to be. And you'll see as we finish this, uh, it's an error that I should have uh, corrected by doing a thumbnail. And I, you know, it's basics, uh, and it's definitely things I think people should really be doing. And really, right, right quick there, before I keep talking about thumbnails, I just ghosted in uh, some flow that I wanted for his hair. Uh, some Fabi Fabio, Fabio, whatever you want to call him. You know, uh, Captain Seagull into the nose, if anybody knows what I'm talking about. And here again. Now we're going to start taking care of some business. Uh, cracking out the needable eraser, erasing it again. And I'm going to start doing my tight line work here. And I think because of uh, I didn't know how long the recording was going, I've actually sped it up. This isn't 100% uh, how fast I'm going. Uh, this is a little bit closer to 50%, maybe 25% increased speed. And I didn't know how long the video was going, and I'm not 100% sure what my upload limit is to YouTube. Uh, so instead of doing like a, a one to two hour video and compressing it to ten minutes, I'm going to do it in little chunks here. Uh, so I think as far as we get is the face. So right here I sharpen up my, uh, uh, my, my, my pencil and I'm working on his eyebrows. I'm a big fan of eyebrows, uh, especially in dwarf characters and things like that where they get really wild, you know. Um, so you can get pretty, uh, a pretty good range of expression in eyebrows, I find, more so than the eyes sometimes. And here I'm working on the other one. Just kind of giving a little bit of a curl. And uh, with this tight line art stuff here, I, I don't know how much I'll, I'll really be able to narrate. Um, because as I'm watching it here, it, it's a little bit, you know, it is what it is. I'm just picking the, the tight lines that I like from the gesture. And so, you know, not restricting yourself to the gesture lines being your final lines, they're just there as a, as a guide, you know, uh, like a good example there is I just gave him, you can't really see it too much here, but I'll zoom in towards the end and hopefully you guys can see it, I uh, just gave him a quick little nose ring, a uh, little detail, you know, every stage is a working stage until, uh, uh, for me, it's pretty much finalized once I start worrying about line weights, and we'll talk about that a little bit later, uh, and especially shadow. Uh, in this stage here when I'm doing just my tight line work, that's when I can still feel like I can go in there and add detail if I need it, uh, specific things like piercings, uh, but big complex shapes like that axe, you know, the general shape would be good to have there. Uh, so here I'm giving him his mustache, uh, but I figured, you know, may as well make it even more dwarfish and uh, make it braids, you know, celebrate that hair. And I'm a big fan of John mustaches. Uh, I figure they're pretty, they're, ex they're almost as expressive as the eyebrows, uh, personally especially when they're pretty wild like this. Uh, here, just working on the other side. And I think next we're going to jump into drawing the mouth. I could be wrong. And uh, yeah, Okay, here we go. And I'm just going to curl his lip up a little bit just to give it a little bit more life. Uh, and then I'm going to start 
putting in some teeth. And uh, right about here, yeah, right there, I just made him missing a tooth just to give it a little bit more, you know, interest, I guess. <laughs> Make it looks like the guy's a little bit of a brawler, you know, he's a scrapper, he gets around, does what he has to do. Uh, we're going to work on the top of the teeth here. And just break in where those teeth are going to be. Uh, working on the, the molars and all that good stuff. I don't even know if I give him a tongue, to be honest. Uh, okay, so we're going to work on the up, uh, the lower lip there. And I really like that, uh, drawing those on faces. Uh, you know, your your bottom lip, it can get some really cool folds in there, especially when you're drawing, uh, like, old men or fantasy creatures or, or, you know, big visceral characters like this dwarf. Uh, you know, I really want to accentuate that. Uh, especially when things are covered by hair. You know, I find it's really helpful to go in there and add as much, whatever real estate you can get with folds and skin, you'll see once we start giving it some light. Uh, I find, you know, when you got folds to work with on skin, it, it gives it a little extra dimension. Um, yep, so I drew on the, the eyes there. Usually I save the pupils for the end uh, because my hand's going to be going around here quite a bit and I don't want to smear anything and that's, you know, it's it's pretty small area and I don't have to erase to make corrections. Okay, so for the hair here, what I'm doing is I'm just putting in some guides, some quick established uh, line sources for where the hair is going to be originating from from the from his crown, you know, on the top of your head, uh, right where your, your hair starts to touch your scalp. And uh, you can't really see it here, but I'm hoping, I'll try to get even closer once we start rendering and stuff, uh, so you can see... Uh, what I'm doing for layering the hair. And you'll see when I zoom in what I was uh, trying to get at. Here I'm just uh, making sure I, I got his ears in there. I wanted to give him a little bit of cauliflower type of ears. You know, anybody that watches like UFC or wrestling or boxing, uh, you know, you'll see these guys that got like the caulif cauliflower ears they're called. And, I, you know, I'm going to go back and I'm going to work on that a little bit uh, in uh, future videos. And here, again, doing the exact same thing I did with the hair. Uh, basically giving a framework and an area to play in uh, when I need to worry about the hair uh, for his beard. And I'm just putting some gesture lines in there. And a lot of these lines, I find, I don't like to go too crazy with them, especially with the hair, because once I start doing line weights and shadowing, uh, it's pretty pointless. You know, I, I don't like to leave a very open line style of drawing. I like to get in there and add the shading, add the line weights. Um, if, if you're a person or an artist that likes to just work when, in solid lines and let, uh, you know, your colorist do the work for you, not the work, I apologize, do uh, the dramatic effects that you might not be trying to get with your basic line work, um, I highly recommend spending the time to go in there and adding the line work. Uh, it just gives it a little bit more, you know, interest. Uh, just add a little bit of a vein on his head, just to make it a little more uh, comedic. And I think we've probably got about 40 seconds left of the video, so I'll just, uh, you know, start doing all the credits and stuff, and I think I'm going to zoom in so you can see it. Uh, but thanks so much for watching. I hope you guys are enjoying this, uh, and I hope you'll stick around to watch uh, future videos. Um, I'm trying to get another one up before next Friday, but if not, I'll definitely have one up for Friday. And again, you can check out my website and my work at jonathanrector.com. Uh, feel free to add me on Twitter, Facebook, um, you know, DeviantArt as well. Oh, and I invite anybody, uh, if you like these shows, uh, 10.30 a.m. Eastern Time, Mondays and Wednesdays on Ustream, you can check out the live uh, broadcast that I do. It's similar to this, and uh, you can come check that out. So again, thanks for watching, and uh, hopefully we'll check you guys out next time. Take care, and we'll talk to you soon. Bye.